Activists have a new goal, degrowth. They say it might save the planet, because if growth continues... It means a future of climate chaos. The no-growth idea is popular. More than a thousand so-called experts signed this letter. Calling for an end to a capitalist system which pursues growth at all costs. Our addiction to economic growth is killing us. Growth is not killing us, it is saving us. Author Johann Norberg points out that growth is essential to human progress, especially for poor people. Growth is most important for people who have the least. In poor countries, if you open up your economy, if you manage to grow by 4% annually over 20 years, that reduces poverty in that country on average by 80%. But the activists claim... Our addiction to making and consuming more stuff is exhausting the planet. Degrowth is better, they say, because it puts well-being ahead of profit. They say we should buy less stuff, grow our own food. The smaller, slower economy could also be a sweeter economy. A sweeter economy? This degrowth argument is just nonsense. We've just had an experiment with degrowth, unintentionally, during the pandemic. Suspending all travel from Europe. States urging people to stay home. Half the world's population was under house arrest. All the flights were grounded. Did that save us? No, it was a terrible tragedy for for humanity. 60 million people were thrown into extreme poverty in that one year alone. Yet some activists say the pandemic was a good thing. It gave the planet a break. The global shutdown did a lot of environmental good. Shutting things down did reduce carbon emissions, but... By no more than 6%. So if we wanted to reduce global warming, then we would need one pandemic like that every year. And that would be a terrible disaster for human life and health. Yet that is what the degrowth movement wants. They say growth means climate change is worse and, and we take up more space and we destroy nature. If we didn't have any economic growth since the 1950s, we'd have slightly less global warming. But many more people, around half a million more people, would die because of climate-related natural disasters. In fact, the risk of dying has declined by some 90% since the 1950s. And that's not because we have fewer disasters or because there is no global warming. It's because we've had economic growth. And it means that we improve construction, we improve early warning systems, we improve healthcare, which means that we can deal with all these problems and all disasters in a better way than we would otherwise have had. In addition to limiting harm from disasters, Growth gives us more choices. Growth is not really about money. It's about opportunity. It's about the chance of doing the things that we want to do with our lives. Like pursuing work you enjoy and having more free time for leisure, friends, and family. Over time, even a little growth makes a huge beneficial difference. If Sweden, my own country, had had just one percentage point lower economic growth per capita, then Sweden today would be as poor as Albania. What's wrong with Albania? Albanians are a quarter as rich as Swedes, and that shows in everything from life expectancy and child mortality to working conditions. Albania's growth was limited by years of communism. As a result, today, these Albanians risked their lives to try to get to countries that grew richer. Albanians now make up the single largest group arriving in small boats. That's what you need to know about different economic and political systems. Look at where the refugees go. They always go from more socialist economies to capitalist economies. People risk their lives to get to freedom and to prosperity. We urgently need to shift to a post-growth post-capitalist economy. A post-capitalist economy. Degrowth activists say the real enemy is capitalism. This professor says capitalism is at war against life itself. We, this degrowth advocate, wins applause saying, urgently dismantle capitalism. <laughs> what then would be better? We invited him and more than a dozen other degrowth promoters to join us here to explain the evils of capitalism and how degrowth will be better. Not one would agree. 
This activist emailed that he'll pass because Stossel TV is nowhere near his standard of rigorous journalism. It's too bad that not one of them would come here to argue. I wanted to hear the capitalism haters explain what's wrong with free markets. Because Norberg's new book says, The global free market will save the world? That's pretty grandiose. But it is saving the world. Bit by bit, step by step, every day. Every day over the past 20 years, more than 130,000 people were lifted out of extreme poverty. Every day. <laughs> That means growth lifted millions from stoop labor, from burning manure from heat, from lives where they die young. And when people get richer, then they can afford to care about protecting nature. That's why rich countries have cleaner air, even water you can swim in. Only growth will give us the technology to reduce pollution and adjust to climate change. Degrowth would leave the world poor, miserable, and polluted. Since growth is good, I'm glad our YouTube channel's growing. If you want to help us get to a million subscribers, please subscribe and hit the notification bell to make sure you get our next video.